Hello, and welcome to the first in a series of audio tours about ocular histologic anatomy of vertebrates. I'm Chris Riley. I'll be guiding you through these tours, and we're going to start out with the overview or low magnification sort of big picture uh, approach to ocular anatomy. Um, we're going to start and focus on the dog as our uh, example of Joe vertebrate eye, but we'll touch on some other species uh, with comparative notes as appropriate. Um, so what we're looking at here is a uh, subgross image of a sagittal section of the eye that's cut from front to back, where the right of the screen is the cornea, the left of the screen is the optic nerve, and as I said, we're going to walk you through uh, all the different layers and parts and function um, of the eye uh, in subsequent videos. What we're going to start with here is to get you thinking of the eye as a three-layered uh, organ, um, and we're going to discuss uh, the way we break up those layers uh, and their function now. So um, the outermost uh, layer of the eye is called the fibrous tunic. Uh, that provides rigidity and protection, um, a, uh, a barrier function against the outside world. And its parts are the cornea, uh, which is here, as I said, to the right. And then uh, you see this angular line of uh, tinctural difference where the color of the collagen goes from more light pink to more dark pink. Uh, this is the limbus, which we'll be discussed in more detail in the, the tour of the fibrous tunic. But here is where it shifts from clear cornea to opaque and white uh, sclera. Again, this is a, a contiguous uh, tunic. And then, uh, again, it will be discussed in more detail, but at the back here, uh, the sclera makes a little sieve um, that allows the, the fibers of the optic nerve to head out uh, and go into, uh, into the brain where the image uh, is interpreted. Um, so fibrous tunic uh, is the outermost portion. Um, then the middle tunic is also called the vascular tunic, also called the uvea, and that is subdivided into several parts, which again will be covered in more detail in the um, tour about the uvea. Um, the parts of the uvea are uh, the iris here, which uh, gives the eye um, the color that we talk about when we talk about an animal or a person having blue eyes, green eyes, yellow eyes. Um, then you move posteriorly to the ciliary body, which is subdivided into two parts. There's the pars placata, which has the ciliary processes, uh, which function to support the lens, uh, as well as the, uh, the muscle in the stroma, which again we'll look at in more detail in subsequent videos. Um, and then as you move posteriorly, um, uh, there's the pars plana, which is the flattened portion of the, uh, of the ciliary body. And then at a junction here, which we'll zoom in on just a titch, we can see the uh, junction of the ciliary body and the retina, uh, which is called the aura ciliaris retinae or aura serrata, um, a little more clinically, uh, but again, we'll talk about that. Uh, and at that junction, the pigmented uvea becomes uh, what we call the choroid. And then the innermost layer in the three tunic system uh, is the neural tunic, and that is the neural retina, which you can see here as a lamellar or laminar, excuse me, uh, layer of tissue with several different uh, nuclear layers and more eosinophilic uh, layers, which again we'll discuss in more detail. Um, of note, which again we'll discuss in more detail, um, bear in mind that the neural retina um, does continue anteriorly as the epithelial linings of the uvea, uh, but conventionally they, those epithelial linings no longer have a nervous function uh, and are just considered part of the uh, vascular tunic um, for all intents and purposes. Um, and then the other parts of the eye at low magnification uh, are the clear media, so the aqueous humor would fill up the anterior and posterior chambers, and then the vitreous humor uh, is in the posterior segment, not to be confused with the posterior chamber, which is here. Uh, posterior segment is uh, composed largely of the vitreous chamber, uh, which contains the vitreous body, and that's the bulk of the, the size of the globe. And then in the center, more or less here, is the uh, sort of oblong and brightly eosinophilic uh, lens, which uh, we'll cover some differences of as we go through. Um, note to the very right of the screen, you can see 
several uh, different small thumbnails of different species showing the difference in uh, relative shape even amongst mammals, uh, a beagle, a cinnamalgus macaque, and a rabbit, uh, different relative volumes of lens to vitreous, uh, relative uh, differences in positioning of the lens which relate to niche uh, in the environment and things of that sort. Uh, and then briefly, I'll just show you guys some of the um, big picture changes you can see in some of the non-mammalian vertebrates. Uh, this is an owl eye. You can see they have a tubular shaped eye. Uh, which is maintained by a large scleral ossicle, uh, which will be um, discussed in more detail. Uh, scleral cartilage continues along the back, which again gives this eye the rigidity um, to maintain its uh, unique shape, which maximizes the amount of light that an owl gets to its retina. And then another low magnification modification in birds uh, is the presence of a pectinoculi, which is a pigmented vascular structure uh, which extends into the vitreous. Uh, again, that will be uh, discussed. And then just for fun, we also have a, uh, this is a Paku fish uh, showing some similar modifications as the bird. We've got scleral ossicles here, a thicker plate of scleral cartilage in the back. Uh, this particular fish has abundant fat or adipose in its uh, choroid, which uh, again is strikingly different than the other species that we've looked at. Uh, so far, um, and a lot of uh, other uh, modifications that we'll discuss um, in more detail. But again, appreciate the differences in size of uh, and shape of the eye as it relates to an animal's uh, niche in the environment um, and how vision affects uh, a given animal or species of animals' day-to-day um, -day life. And hopefully that will get you guys excited about uh, the subsequent uh, tours and uh, all things ophthalmological. Uh, thank you for joining me and uh, we'll see you in the next tour.